Here's the situation we recently faced at Chiron. One of our instructors in Jordan working with local students noticed that our Introduction to Marketing MOOC that we use in our curriculum contained examples that were considered culturally inappropriate. One of them, for instance, was lingerie. Our team had chosen the MOOC initially because it helps students reach certain learning outcomes for an introductory business and economics module. It was produced by a Western university and is available on an international third-party MOOC provider. So, how do we address this problem? Do we get rid of the MOOC entirely from our curriculum because it has the potential to offend some of our students? Or do we tell those students to deal with it because it's the best MOOC available for their learning purposes? This is the kind of tricky situation that can arise when you're working with such a diverse group of students. And unfortunately, it doesn't usually come with an easy response or quick fix. In our case, it sparked an ongoing discussion about how to prevent these types of issues in the future by, for instance, identifying potential controversial parts of MOOCs beforehand and maybe replacing them with culturally sensitive examples that still allow students to achieve the same learning goals. As we've discussed, one of the clear benefits of online learning is its potential to bring together such a diverse group of students. This can be a really enriching experience for you and your students, but it can also lead to natural questions about how to deal with cultural diversity, how to promote dialogue in an intercultural environment, and even how to manage conflict. Many of our Chiron tutorial instructors over the past couple of years have told us they'd really love to learn more about how to support their culturally diverse group of students, which is where the idea for this unit came from. We could go about this topic in one of two ways. The first would be ramming facts about different types of groups down your throats and talking about differences to expect. I'm sure you've heard something like this before. If you go to Japan on a business trip, make sure to bow instead of shaking hands. It's not to say those tips aren't useful, but we thought it would be even more useful and interesting to turn the reflection inwards to ourselves. If we start to better understand our own assumptions toward other cultures or diversity in general, Perhaps we can better avoid creating barriers, whether conscious or subconscious, between us and our students. This is why we've called this unit, I Don't Judge. Do I? Spoiler alert, you do judge. We all do. Whether we know it or not, no matter how well-intentioned, open, or worldly we consider ourselves to be, we all have bias, prejudices, and are influenced by stereotypes. Rather than ignore them or shame ourselves for having them, we can choose to actively recognize and try to deconstruct them, asking ourselves where they stem from initially and develop strategies to combat them. This is important for our personal growth and it's also critical when working in a culturally diverse classroom. Because the way culture is handled or addressed can not only impact the overall classroom experience, but it's shown to affect student learning, motivation, and satisfaction.